Welcome everyone to chapel at Bethany Theological Seminary this morning. I am Joey Moss, an MDiv student at Bethany, who is joining you from the sanctuary of Drainsville Church of the Brethren in Northern Virginia. And I'm excited to worship together with all of you on Zoom as we're able to gather together from such an incredible spread of different places. If possible, please turn on your screen uh, so that we can see Christ's presence in you. Today, we will be encouraged in our individual vocations as we welcome today's sermon from Dr. Jill Schweitzer, Assistant Professor of Biology and Biochemistry at Indiana University East, who also served as an adjunct professor at Bethany. This is part of our series on good works as a means of ecumenical dialogue. Please join me in the call to worship that will appear on the screen and is also printed on the bulletin that can be downloaded in the Zoom chat. I will read the portion labeled leader while you can remain muted while you read the, por the portion labeled people. Aaron Dalrymple, a current CAT student, will represent the people and speak on your behalf. Grace unto you and peace from God, who was and who is and who is to come. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, ruler above all rulers of the earth. In love, Jesus suffered death to free us from our sins. Making all who confess Christ a nation of priests set aside for God's service. Let's praise the Lord. Almighty God, send your transforming spirit among us. Give us ears to hear your call to us, so that as darkness vanishes away, we will have clarity in building up your kingdom on earth. Gather our spirits in, so that in accomplishing a common goal in your presence, your church may be knit together in love and unity. In holy expectation of your great works, we pray. Amen. Let us continue our worship by singing the hymn, Here in This Place. It can be found in hymnal, a worship book, as number six, where we will be singing verses one to three, and the words will also be shown on the screen. Mm -hmm. Holy 
Here, here now a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. May God add a blessing to the reading and now the preaching of this holy word. Um, thank you very much for the invitation to preach and share with you today. I confess that I had to chuckle when I um, received Dawn's email because in one line she said, I don't know if you're often invited to preach. Um, no, I'm not often invited to preach. In fact, never have I been invited to preach. So thank you for this unique opportunity to share with you in the function of preacher, which of course I don't consider myself, but it's a, it's a pleasure to do so today. I've enjoyed teaching a science and religion class at Bethany twice in the past, and I hope to do that in the future as well. Um, this is definitely an area that interests me. So I selected these verses from Romans today because they have been meaningful to me as I have come to understand my own duty to serve God with my whole self. So today what I wanted to do is to share some of my own personal experience related to vocation and call. And then I wanted to share the story of a modern day, what I consider a modern day hero of the faith who inspires me on my journey, both um, living as a scientist and as a follower of Jesus. So I grew up in a rather fundamental Christian tradition, and I accepted Jesus as my savior as a, at a young age. I was baptized at the age of 12. And then as a young person, I really wrestled with the question of what it means to be a true and holy sacrifice and to offer myself as a living sacrifice to God. I was always encouraged by those around me to pursue my interests in science and math. And this really helped me to sense a confirmation of those strengths. By the time I finished high school, I headed to college with the intention of pursuing a career in medicine as a doctor. But then during my junior year, I had some experiences that altered my career path. I participated in a biochemistry related undergraduate research project with one of my professors. And this experience really ignited my passion for research. The hunt for new knowledge of the natural world excited me, and it was thrilling to discover answers using the tools of science. During my junior year, I also gained a deeper understanding of vocation and call through my experience of attending the Urbana 93 conference. You can figure out how old that makes me, I guess. Um, the workshops and worship experiences there really helped me to see that God calls each of us to use our vocation uh, to worship him and to carry out his work in the world. While some of us are called to mission or ministry work, other, all of us are called to be a holy and living sacrifice. And I really felt that um, God just gave me opportunities to continue to develop my uh, career as a scientist. So eventually I pursued a PhD in molecular biology and then went on to complete nine years of postdoctoral research in cell biology. And today I continue to do scientific research in my vocation as a teacher and scholar here at IU East, although my primary activity is teaching. But I feel privileged to mentor undergraduate students in research projects, and I never tire of using the tools of science to discover new things about the world that God has created. Personally, I, have, I feel fortunate that I have never felt a conflict between my faith and my vocation as a scientist. And in fact, I didn't always really pay, pay much heed to the intersectionality of these two aspects of my identity. 
In fact, there was always one issue that I just kind of avoided thinking of entirely and that, or too deeply about, I shouldn't say entirely, but too deeply. And that was really evolution. That's definitely a flashpoint between faith and science for many people. And for most of my years as a young person and during college, I just accepted evolution in my Christian faith without needing much explanation or harmonization between the two. And during college, I can remember reading a book by Michael Behe about really was about intelligent design. And at the time, it satisfied my limited questions. Many years later, though, while taking a break from my research career to spend time homeschooling my young children, I encountered the worldview of young earth creationism. And this encounter really prompted me to pursue more satisfactory answers to hot button faith versus science questions like evolution and other issues. And so I was searching for scientifically informed and faith infused answers. And this really led me to the work and writing of Dr. Francis Collins. And so I really wanna share um, some of his story and work with you. So some of you may recognize his name, but it seems that most people I meet do not recognize him. Dr. Francis Collins is the recently retired director of the National Institutes of Health or the NIH. So I wanted to read a press release um, from the NIH that was posted upon his retirement. Francis S. Collins, MD, PhD, is stepping down as NIH director on December 19, 2021, after more than 12 years at the helm. A physician geneticist, Dr. Collins took office as the 16th NIH director on August 17th, 2009, after being appointed by President Barack Obama and confirmed by the U.S. Senate. In 2017, he was asked to continue in his role by President Donald Trump and in 2021 by President Joe Biden. The longest serving presidentially appointed NIH director, Dr. Collins' impact on biomedical research and the health of the nation is difficult to overstate. From launching the Brain Research Through Advancing Innovative Technologies or BRAIN initiative to spearheading NIH's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Collins has steered the country's largest medical research agency with a calm hand, a scientific mind, and a deep commitment to the well-being of all Americans. A quote from President Joe Biden reads, millions of people will never know Dr. Collins saved their lives. Countless researchers will aspire to follow in his footsteps, and I will miss the counsel, expertise, and good humor of a brilliant mind and dear friend. So this just gives you a little glimpse into Dr. Collins, who is still an active researcher at the age of 71. But Dr. Fa Dr. Francis Collins also became a father of Jesus many years ago when he was practicing medicine as a young doctor. He was asked by a patient, what do you believe, after she had shared how God was helping her in her recovery. And it, at this time, Francis realized that it was time for him to learn more about faith traditions. He thought that this journey would affirm his atheism, his atheistic stance at the time, but instead he found himself believing in the person and ministry of Jesus Christ. Dr. Collins went on in his professional life to um, get a PhD as well and run a research lab that found the genetic cause of several human diseases, paving the way for the development of new therapeutic treatments. These diseases include cystic fibrosis, Huntington's disease, and some genetic determinants of type two diabetes, as well as a few others. Then later, Dr. Collins went on to lead the publicly funded effort to sequence the entire human genome, so all the DNA that's in every single one of our cells. When standing with President Bill Clinton in June 2000 to celebrate the first complete draft of the genome, Collins said, we have caught the first glimpse of our own instruction book, previously known only to God. Later, he commented that sequencing the human genome was both a stunning scientific achievement and an occasion of worship. In 2006, Collins published a book entitled The Language of God, in which he shares his personal story of faith as well as insights from the Human Genome Sequencing Project. In the book, he also describes 
how human DNA, our genome, bears many hallmarks of evolution, and how the study of DNA sequences in general is a powerful tool to, le to learn more about the process of evolution. When I was looking for solid answers about evolution and other questions that pitted science against faith, I found what I was looking for in Dr. Collins's book and in the website and community that he started called BioLogos. In addition to meaningful resources, well-written scholarly articles covering topics such as evolution, climate change, human identity, the problem of suffering, and many more, I encountered um, Dr. Collins's own personal example of holy living and sacrifice. I found that Dr. Collins lives out Jesus' commandment to love one another. Through his vocation as a scientist, Dr. Collins has literally saved the lives of countless people because of his work on genetic diseases and his leadership at the NIH. And he's not done yet. As I already mentioned, he's he, since retiring from the directorship of the NIH at the end of last year, he's returned to running a research lab at the NIH at the age of 71. Dr. Collins is also a bridge builder who spreads the message of wholeness and reconciliation. As both a scientist and a person of faith, he shamelessly and relentlessly speaks about both of these aspects of his identity, and he seeks ways to bring people together in life-giving ways that can help to bridge um, or build bridges between these two communities. Dr. Collins also lives a life of service. As a scientist and a person of faith, he continues to raise the profile of science as a vocation of service. And over the past several years, I found that scientists, regardless of faith background, are seeking to meaningfully serve the people that we are trying to reach with our research and our discoveries. And he's one of those scientists who is seeking more direct ways to do that by reaching out to communities of faith, as well as other types of communities where people are coming together. In Dr. Collins's case, he's using his voice as a Christian scientist to serve people by sharing his knowledge in humble and meaningful ways, often with communities of faith. Throughout the pandemic, for example, he gave interviews and engaged in dialogue to help communicate scientifically accurate information in ways that people could understand and use. In one case, I heard him describe seeking help from God as he oversaw the incredible effort to produce effective vaccines against COVID-19. In another example, he recorded a video conversation with a fellow um, colleague, in this case, um, an African-American evangelical leader and bridge builder, Dr. David Anderson. This was in April of 2021. The title of this recording is How Can Christians End the Pandemic? And this was at a time when COVID-19 vaccines were available to the public and Francis Collins wanted to take an opportunity to answer questions that were coming from Christians in particular. So these were questions that were coming from Dr. Anderson's own faith uh, community or congregation. Many of these questions were quite thorny and pointed, but the two leaders engaged in a thoughtful and meaningful dialogue. At one point in this conversation, Dr. Collins shared about the development of the vaccines and about the results of the clinical trials um, and how they had become available and what they had revealed. He also shared that as the vaccines were being developed, Collins had hoped for about 60% effectiveness, which would be about the level of most flu vaccines. But when he saw the data that indicated they were 95% effective, he shed some tears and thought, what an answer to prayer. What a gift from God. When I heard this, I was really struck by Dr. Collins's wholehearted acknowledgement of God's provision of highly effective COVID-19 vaccines and the lives that could be saved by this gift. I also thought to myself that this was a stark contrast to other comments that I had heard um, from some Christian leaders who were silent about the vaccines or openly skeptical about their development and usefulness. 
So bringing it in for close, um, as a committed person of faith and accomplished scientist, Dr. Collins offers his whole being, his whole self to God as a living and holy sacrifice. His example has inspired me to continue to follow Jesus and continue to use my vocation and all aspects of my identity um, as worship to God. Collins's writings and the work of BioLogos support and strengthen my own faith. May this glimpse into the life of a modern day Christian scientist encourage you in your own vocation and call. Thank you. Let us respond in worship to this great word with the hymn, Lord Speak to Me, which can be found in the hymnal or worship book as number 499, and the words will also be on the screen. We will see in verses 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Please join me in prayer for our Christian brothers and sisters as we are engaged in the work of our vocations. I will give a prayer and you may respond while muted with Holy Spirit, empower your people to do your work. Aaron Dalrymple again will give this response on your behalf. This prayer will also appear on your screen. Almighty God, infuse us with the power of your new creation so that we may accomplish the unique purpose that you have set out for us. Holy Spirit, empower your people to do your work. Grant insight to researchers as they explore your creation, so that all of humanity will be blessed by their discoveries. Holy Spirit, empower your people to do your work. Grant clarity of mind to teachers and professors, so they will be able to explain the great mysteries that you have revealed to them. Holy Spirit, empower your people to do your work. Grant inquisitiveness and in curiosity to students, so that they will be inspired by the beauty of your truth. Holy Spirit, empower your people to do your work. Grant mercy and compassion to public servants, so that they will do justice and establish your peace in the good world that you created. Holy Spirit, empower your people to do your work. Grant strength and purpose to those in business so that all will benefit from the fruits of their labor. Holy Spirit, empower your people to do your work. Grant a pure heart to religious leaders so that they will lead your people to become a living sacrifice 
holy and pleasing to you. Holy Spirit, empower your people to do your work. Grant that all of your people will see a vision of your kingdom, so that we may in unity work for the peace of the world. Holy Spirit, empower your people to do your work. As one united people, we say. Amen. Amen. As one body in Christ, receive this commission. The God of steadfastness sends you into the world. The God of encouragement bids you to live in harmony. Live each day with hope, welcoming one another. Rejoice that Christ welcomes and claims you. Join with God in seeking justice for all. In one body, make God's peace flourish in this world. Amen.